Hi, I'm Ken Edwards. And I'm Dane Rakestraw. We're with Keystone Steel & Wire, manufacturers of Red Brand Agricultural Fence Products. The steps we're going to show you today will make sure you have a fence that looks good and lasts a long time. We're here today to talk about the proper steps in fencing in your garden. I'd like to take a minute to talk about the products we're going to use today. Red Brand Welded Wire is made here in Peoria, Illinois from recycled steel. We take pride in having better welds and more protective zinc coating than other competing products in the industry. The other product that could be used for this project is Yard Garden and Kennel, also made here in Peoria, Illinois from recycled steel. The difference between welded wire and Yard Garden and Kennel is Yard Garden and Kennel has knots instead of welds, allowing for the wire to conform to the terrain when installing. It's also an economical alternative to chain link. The product is made out of Class 1 protective zinc coating, which will make sure your project lasts a long time. For this project, we've elected to use 48-inch yard yard and kennel. The first step is to set your corner post to the desired height. We're using 8-foot, 4x6 treated posts for this project. Here we've elected to set the post using concrete to make sure it's firm in place. You can use concrete, small pebbles, like some loose rock, or even tamp the post. But in this particular project, we decided to use concrete to make sure we have a strong corner post. The next step is to measure the distance for your gate opening. For this particular project, we've selected a six-foot gate opening. Yeah, I've marked a spot on the string so I'm able to dig the hole in the proper location because that's that's critical for the gate opening. You don't want a real wide opening to let small animals in. Here again we're setting a large post four by six. It needs to be level across the top using a string level. We've also used concrete there as well. The next thing you're going to want to do is drive a T-post in for your side string. This is going to be used to set your line posts. It'll make sure they're nice and straight. Ken's going to walk this side string to the other end of the fence project. On the other end, just kind of get an idea of where you want your fence to go. Um, after driving this post, you can pull your string tight and bend it one way or the other, just a little bit to fine tune where actually your fence is going to be installed. As you can see here, the side string is laying against our 4x6. Here we're installing a center post. Because our fence line is so long on this side, we wanted to add rigidity to the fence, so we installed another 4x6 at the midway point. And at this point, we're actually measuring for our posts, uh, making painted marks on the ground. Here we've elected to use 10-foot post spacing and using steel T-posts. There's a term in fencing called checking in that will allow you to get equal post spacing from corner post to corner post. Checking in is an important part of the project for proper post spacing. For equal spacing throughout your project, measure the last 100 feet and divide equally to best match your desired spacing. This illustration will help demonstrate. At this point, I've pulled a string across the top from end post to end post. This allows you to get the proper height for your post as you're setting them so they will be level across the top. Here you can see that I'm driving the post at the painted mark that we placed on the ground. There's a string along the side to give me the, the side measurement and a string across the top for the proper height. That way all the posts are uniform in the entire fence line. For this project, we've elected to use a floating brace. There are four main components of a floating brace. A concrete pad, a brace post, the corner post, and brace wire. The brace post should be positioned less than 30 degrees off the corner post. There's many advantages to the floating brace compared to the conventional H brace system. Floating brace is cheaper, it can be easier to install, and with the components relatively available, any, any homeowner can, can actually install this brace. 
first step is to cut your angle brace post. Next, you'll want to affix your galvanized plate to your angle brace post. This will be used to connect the angle brace post to the corner post. Here you've noticed that we've used uh, decking screws to make sure again that this, this brace is, is attached to the corner post firmly. The next task is to build your brace wire assembly. To make this brace loop, you'll need to take the end of the wire, wrap it around itself a couple times, through the loop you've created, back around itself a couple more times, and you should have the finished product. Next, you'll want to fasten this brace loop to the end of your angle brace post with a staple. At this point, you're going to want to find the midway point between your corner post and your concrete pad. You'll be using a turnbuckle at the midway point to affix your brace assembly. These can be picked up at your local hardware store. You'll be using a turnbuckle. This will allow you to be able to tighten the brace wire that you have wrapped around your corner post, around the end of the angle brace post. And here you can see that I'm actually wrapping the wire around that comes from the bottom of the corner post. Once we get a good wrap on this, just tighten the turnbuckle and that wire is nice and tight. Tighten the turnbuckle hand tight. It allows you to come back at a later date to be able to adjust, adjust this if you need to. And here's your finished folding brace. Here's an example of a double floating brace. You'll need to complete the rest of these in your fence project. Next, we're going to want to install the wire. For this particular fence job, we need to splice two rolls of wire together. Here's an example of how you splice two rolls of wire together. And here's what it looks like when it's finished. Next you want to attach the wire to one of the corner posts. Here at the selected height, I'm driving a small three-quarter inch staple into the product just to kind of hold it in place. And with any small opening product like this, you obviously would not staple every single line wire. So we've decided to attach a one by six that acts like a clamp to actually clamp the wire down onto the post with decking screws. Next one, we'll roll the wire. You notice that I'm walking backwards unrolling the wire. You, you don't want to walk on the wire when you're unrolling it. You have a tendency to, to maybe trip. Rolling it out to the, the corner post that we'll actually be pulling to. Next we're going to show you how to build a dummy brace. A dummy brace allows you to uh, pull off of that dummy brace, applying force back into the permanent brace. So you take a four by four by eight foot uh, post laid on the ground that gives you your distance. Set a, another four by four by eight foot in the ground just temporarily. Using a drill to uh, drill a small hole into the permanent corner post. And then drill both ends of the 4x4 uh, cross member brace that, again, this will be temporary. Drill a, your last hole through the dummy brace post that's going to be in the ground. Using a 3 8 by 10 inch galvanized pin or something similar, 
affix this brace to the dummy post. And then just shim the post up with a couple boards just to make sure that everything's just kind of solid. This, this will keep you from uh, having to pull off a pickup truck or a tractor or something like that and uh, actually makes the, the product go up much stronger than if you were using something artificial. Next you'll need to install a fence stretcher. We've decided to use two 2x4s bolted together just with 3 8 bolts. This is a very economical way to grasp the product as one unit and that's how you want to, to pull this fence is as one complete unit. Next, cut the excess wire off of the uh, fence stretcher. Here we're just putting a couple chains on the fence stretcher. These will be affixed to our come-alongs, which will actually pull the fence. And these are small chains. These are only about 18 inches long. Next, attach a come-along on the top and just get a little bit of slack out and, and attach another one on the bottom. All of the force that I'm actually putting into the fence with these come-alongs is being applied back into the floating brace. And this force has to be stored into both brace assemblies, the one on the other end that you do not see in the screen and the one that, that, that's right in front of me working. So when you pull off of something artificial and affix the fence to that post that you're working at and you release the pressure off the artificial pulling point, all of that force gets put into that permanent brace assembly within five seconds. And here you can see what that dummy brace assembly is actually doing by pushing back in on that corner post. So here the force is being applied into the permanent floating brace as the fence is being installed and tightened. Once you get the fence tight and the vertical wires straight as you see here, then you want to start to affix the, the fence to the corner post. Again, use a small three quarter inch staple to uh, attach the wire to the corner post and then you're gonna install a fascia board. This is a 1x4 full length screwed into the corner post using wood decking screws. Acts as a clamp so again you're attaching the, the entire product to the corner post. Also make sure to go back to your double floating brace assembly and affix the fascia board. After that affix all your T-post clips to the T-posts as shown here. Next we're going to install the gate. To install the gate, set the gate on some wooden blocks just to make sure you, you're going to have clearance when the gate swings. Make sure it's level. Next you want to mark for your hinges. Just use a plumb bob. Find the, the vertical marks on the post. Pre-drill for the hangers, the leg hangers that come with the gate. Install those hangers. Kind of drive them in a little bit, get them started. And twist those hangers in, leaving some distance out so you'll have plenty of room for the gate to swing. Hang your gate over those leg bolt hangers that are in the post. Tighten the top hinge according to the manufacturer's specifications and your gate swings freely across the ground. One thing to consider when hanging your gate is to make sure it's close enough to the ground to keep rabbits and other small animals out of your garden but yet high enough so it still opens. I hope you found this video to be beneficial in your next fencing project. We hope that the techniques that we showed you today are beneficial in your fence construction project. The tools we use today can be found at your local ag supply store or on our website. Also, for a list of local Red Brand dealers, log on to redbrand.com.